Hey, happy to share some feedback here. Uh, let's take a look at um, your your designs overall. Um, I first I find your um, use of this style really interesting. I think it just kind of strikes me as a kind of cut paper, almost uh, flashback to the '60s kind of abstraction. So that alone makes it an interesting. Um, approach so good job um, so I guess I want to talk about three things one theme two balance and then three the spine okay so first the theme I mentioned that I like the style that you're working in so continue please continue with that good job um, if I could combine any two I would combine this one it's, it's a little um, literal, but, you know, I still find it interesting. Uh, and this one. Okay, so first let's talk about how theme could be applied to this rapture with the hand and this one with fallen. Um, I would turn the hair here into red, matching your um, fallen or excuse me, your rapture with, um, it's almost like blood. Um, and if these were red, they could indicate not only hair, but movement as well. Okay, and then um, to tie this one, make it more like that, I would add a few more lines. Not, you know, not 20 or anything, but like a four or five lines coming from both sides. Okay. Um, Next, um, you know, we all have this tendency to put every piece of artwork right in the dead center and center the type above or below that. Okay, so I'm going to have you um, experiment a little and push the elements off the edge of the book or to this side or to this side or top or bottom or whatever and not show the whole thing, not show the whole figure, and not show it all centered. Okay, so the hand is going to have to go to one side or the other, or maybe it could turn, twist sideways, so, you know, we see the hand, but it's more pointing in this direction, and the blood could still flow across. Um, I kind of like um, Rapture not being perfectly centered, you know. Um, Okay, I said I talk about the spine. So that's what I'm talking about for balance. Right now, you're right here, perfectly symmetrical. And I want you to be more asymmetrical in your balance. Okay, so this is, again, almost perfectly symmetrical, perfectly symmetrical. Let's shift things around a little bit. Okay. Um, okay. Um, now... It seems in some of these you're forgetting the spine altogether. Like this one doesn't have a spine. Um, this one, these don't have really have spines. So I want to remind you of the spine. You need um, the author's last name, the title of the book, and the publisher's mark. Um, don't stack these words. Um, turn them sideways and have them start reading here and go up, here and go up. Or you could do it the other way. Um, sometimes, occasionally, you read them down. That, that's fine. doesn't matter as long as they're not stacked. <laughs> that's what my main concern is. And then you put a publisher's mark there. Uh, it could just be a simple rectangle or circle or something. Um, also, you do need to include the author's name on the cover, so don't forget that part. All right, one other idea... Um, strikes me while I look at this. Oh yeah, so that that's interesting. Where you're breaking it up, but look, it's it's perfectly symmetrical, just right down the middle again. So um, I think you got some good color choices. Very red, black, and white have always been a very powerful um, color combo. Very strong colors. Um, uh, 
So this is uh, pretty interesting. Um, I'm not sure if you're doing this in Illustrator and drawing with just like straight lines. I don't know. I kind of want to know. Um, I would kind of like to tie in the lettering and the illustration. In other words, you know, if you've drawn it with the mouse, which kind of looks like it. I can't tell. <laughs> you know, maybe you should do that for the lettering too. And then they have similar um, styles. Um, the last thing, which I didn't say I'd mention at the beginning, but it just came to me, is you may want to explore some overlap. Of course, if you do explore an overlap, you're going to have to introduce another color, perhaps gray, perhaps light blue or something, so that the words can go over the red and the white and the black and still be legible. So that's another thing you could explore. Um, if this is being done in the computer now, uh, that's a pretty easy thing to experiment with. You just put type on a different layer above the image and you can move things around and you know work that way. Okay, so I hope that's helpful. I'm excited to see these done. Hang in there. We're, we've just about made it. Thanks.